So it was announced a couple of weeks ago at Jump Festa 2023 that the Naruto community was getting a relatively big surprise. While the real biggest news of the night is that Sasuke Retsudon's manga adaptation was going to be made into an anime format in Boruto, the thing that genuinely seemed to slip under the radar was Naruto Top 99, a worldwide popularity contest where everybody on Earth could vote once a day for their favorite character in Naruto. And this is every character in Naruto, it doesn't matter how little screen time they had, they can be on the receiving end of some votes. But this is more than just a popularity contest, because the winner of this popularity contest also gets a manga. And not just a manga written by anybody, but a manga actually created by Kishimoto, which would mean most likely that this would be a canon manga. And with the stakes as high as if your favorite character wins, they get an entire manga written about them, millions of Naruto fans have gone to Naruto Top 99 and voted every single day for their favorite character. And a couple of days ago, the polls, as they currently stood, were released, with this midterm report showing us where all of our favorite characters fall in terms of rank to each other, even going so far as to show who certain continents are voting for. And the top 10 is anything but surprising, but for some reason, people are surprised by it. You see, as it currently stands, Minato is number one. And as somebody who got their first ever anime tattoo of Minato, well, I've been voting for him every single day. In second place is Itachi, and of course it is. Every time I throw Itachi in one of our thumbnails, our video is guaranteed to get views. But where the problems begin for a lot of people is that Sakura appeared at third. People began looking in all directions, trying to figure out Who's voting for Sakura? Theory has been pieced together that the One Piece community is banded together to vote Sakura to be number one as a meme against the Naruto community. And while that would be incredibly funny and also relatively impressive, as a top three, this is arguably the least surprising set of results you could ask for. In fact, Sakura isn't even the most surprising entry into the top 10. So today, I wanna talk about who I believe is going to win the Naruto Top 99, what it means for the Naruto community, and the Naruto community's response to Naruto Top 99. And as somebody who is flying out to Japan on February 2nd, totally not to talk about Naruto Top 99, which has voting close on January 31st, you might wanna listen to a couple of the things I have to say. Before we get to talking about anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you want to make me feel like I'm winning my own popularity contest, then go ahead and follow my other YouTube page, The Weeb Commander, where I talk all anime that's not Naruto. And while you're at it, go ahead and follow my brand new podcast with Danny Mata called Utaku's Anonymous, where we talk all things anime, Naruto included. So, popularity contests. They've been around as long as humans have been around. Sometimes they would look like making the strongest man in the village the chief. Sometimes they look like the king and queen of prom. And other times they look like a bunch of people arguing over the internet internet which fictional character deserves more screen time. Unfortunately for both you and me, we are talking about the last circumstance. Well, Naruto Top 99 was originally just created as something to stave off the masses of Naruto fans who want more content that doesn't look like Boruto. It has evolved into something much greater. Ironically, the big announcement of the night in Sasuke Retsudan getting animated is now overshadowed by Naruto Top 99. And this is because of a mix of things that's happened. One, instead of releasing the Sasuke Retsudan animation as its own freestanding thing, it was released into Boruto. And since Sasuke Retsudan is kind of a fantastical story about Sasuke fighting against Edo Tensai dragons that look like dinosaurs. The manga adaptation into Boruto has been kind of endlessly mean. People without the context of what's going on during Sasuke Retsudan are asking why Sasuke is fighting against dinosaurs, asking why Sasuke needs things like the Sharingan against dinosaurs, and so on and so forth. Because of this, while those who may have read Sasuke Retsudan or those who are keeping up with Boruto are enjoying the arc, it seems to be just another point for everybody to point and laugh at Boruto, which is fine. Boruto is making a ton of money in Japan, it's not gonna stop anytime soon, regardless of how much you laugh at it. But the irony of that situation is that is based of a Sasuke manga, a Sasuke manga adapted from a Sasuke light novel. And the irony of Sasuke Retsudan's animation getting overshadowed by Naruto Top 99 is that that is quite literally the perfect end goal. See, we're gonna be getting a short manga from Kishimoto based on whoever wins Naruto Top 99. Now, a short manga would probably be somewhere around the length of Sasuke Retsudan's manga. So about eight chapters at 40 pages a chapter. And honestly, that's being optimistic. It could also just be one chapter. Mind you, Kishimoto retook over Boruto. And Boruto's only being released 
monthly, which means that Kishimoto's time to draw may be significantly limited. So best case scenario, it's around eight chapters. Worst case scenario, it's one. And yet those who are confused as to why Sakura might actually be winning in Naruto Top 99 are also memeing the end result of their favorite character winning in Naruto Top 99. See, best case, and I mean best case scenario for a Naruto Top 99 manga, is it eventually getting animated? And since the powers that be at Naruto who create Naruto have already made the definitive decision to put these animated light novels into Boruto, regardless of who wins Naruto Top 99, if they get a manga that one day gets animated, most likely it'll end in Boruto. As unfortunately for us, the animated version of Sasuke Retsudan ending up in Boruto largely leans towards the fact that they're going to be using the light novels as filler. And while this isn't the end of the world, because things like Sasuke Retsudan and the Steam Ninja Scrolls are stories completely independent of the Boruto timeline, although obviously though they do go on concurrently with the Boruto timeline. I had somebody get on my ass about that because I said Sasuke Retsudan has nothing to do with the Boruto timeline. Oh, but Sasuke mentioned his daughter. Not what I'm talking about. But because of this, it just seems like a weird response to actually care about who's going to win in Naruto Top 99. Because the same people who don't want Sakura to win probably wouldn't even watch if somebody like Itachi or Minato got a manga that later got adapted into Boruto as a kind of filler content. Even though that storyline is completely dedicated to either Minato or Itachi, like Sasuke Retsudan is to Sasuke. And while the Sasuke Retsudan manga did relatively well, I can almost guarantee you that the majority of people upset about how Naruto Top 99 is heading probably didn't even read Sasuke Retsudan the light novel or the manga. And here's the thing. Once again, I'll make it entirely clear. I voted for Minato, and I will continue to vote for Minato every single day. I've made an entire video where I talked about the best people to vote for in Naruto Top 99. That list included Ashina Uzumaki, Sakamo Hatsuke, and Minato at number one, because these three people are incredibly important people during dark periods in Naruto's timeline. And I don't mean dark in terms of depressing, I mean dark in terms of lore. You see, Sakamo Hatsuke became the White Fang during the Second Great Shinobi World War, where he basically beat back the Hidden Sand by himself and killed Sasori's parents. Minato, while alive during the Second Great Shinobi World War, probably didn't fight in it, but absolutely fought in the third, which we know more about than the second, but still not all that much. And then obviously a story about Ashina Uzumaki would allow us to better understand the Uzumaki clan and more importantly, their downfall. Ironically, in the top three, I don't think Sakura is the person you should be upset about. Honestly, and this opinion might catch me a little bit of flack, in the top three, the person you should be upset about is Itachi. Did somebody try to to tell me that there's no point that Sakura gets her own manga because we know everything that happened in her life already, which is wildly untrue. Because Sakura, very similar to Minato, has also existed through blank periods in Naruto's timeline. Most specifically, the blank period between the end of the Fourth Great Shinobi World's War and the beginning of Boruto. And while about 70% of Naruto light novels exist in that time period, there are still absolutely things that are unaccounted for during that blank period. Itachi has never existed during a blank period. We know almost everything that has ever happened in Itachi's life. We have followed Itachi from when he was four years old to his death religiously. At four years old, Itachi is brought out to a battlefield with his father, Fukaku, to see how terrible war is. It's at this point that Itachi decides he wants to become so powerful that nobody ever wants to wage war again. A couple of years later, his little brother is born. A couple of months after that, Naruto is born. Kurama attacks. He protects Mikoto, his mother, from falling rubble. He joins the Ninja Academy at six and gets the second highest ever score on the written test. Take the tuning exam at seven. Gets the fastest ever time through the Forest of Death. He, by the age of eight, has mastered Ninjutsu to the point where all of his missions are easy for him. He, at eight years old with his Team 2 team, are assigned to protecting the Fire Daimyo. However, the Fire Daimyo was attacked by Obito. Obito then cuts down one of Itachi's teammate, at which point Itachi awakens his Sharingan. Then for the next two years, he runs around and does a couple of missions with Shisui. And actually earlier, I'm sorry, I misspoke. His team captain doesn't allow him to enter the tuning exams until he's 10. And at 10 years old, he enters the tuning exam by himself and once again completes the Forest of Death in the fastest time ever. And that would remain the fastest time ever until Gara. At 11 years old, Itachi joins the Anbu as its youngest ever member, where we know that Itachi joins Team Ro with Kakashi and Yamato. We know that Itachi goes along with Itachi on the famous Land of Woods mission, where Itachi and Kakashi work together to kill the Prajna group after they try to betray the Leaf. We then know at the age of 11, Donzo and Hiruzen decide, you know what? 
age doesn't matter, and decide to forge Itachi's birth document so he can become an Anbu captain at the age of 11 or 12, I don't remember exactly, at which point Danzo indoctrinates him to the root and has him spy on the Uchiha for him. And it's at this point that Itachi realizes that Shisui has also been doing the same thing. Itachi and Shisui spy on the Uchiha for a little bit and decide that they're going to use Shisui's Kodo Matsukame on Fugaku to get him to switch the tides of emotion in the Uchiha towards peace with Konoha. Danzo pulls out Shisui's Ayoji Aburame, poison Shisui. Shisui runs back to Itachi, fully understanding that he's about to die, tells Itachi to kill him so he can awaken his MS. Itachi doesn't do anything about Danzo, continues spying on the Uchiha until eventually he sees a weird man skulking around around the Yaka Shrine. That weird man is Obito, pretending to be Madara, who Itachi recruits to help him in the massacre of his own clan. They do it. Itachi threatens Danzo as he's plucking out the eyes of all his dead brethren, saying that if you ever lay your hands on Sasuke, I will come back to the village and I will kill you with my bare hands. Hiruzen then catches wind of the Uchiha massacre, strips all power from Danzo, and thanks Itachi for what he's done. Itachi then says that he's gonna go keep an eye on the Akatsuki, where we know he was a witness to the recruitment of Hidan. He was the person who defeated Daedara and forced him to join the Akatsuki. He was once a teammate of Juzo, who he fought against Yagura with and watched Juzo die. And it was also in the Akatsuki where Orochimaru tried to take over Itachi's body. Outside of those four things that I just mentioned, there's also an entire chapter in Akatsuki Hiden about Itachi and Kisame. And then obviously, at the end of his Akatsuki run, he battles against Sasuke and dies. And then he's brought back in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, where we don't leave him for a second until he dies again. The only additional manga we could get about Itachi is quite possibly something thing he did in the Akatsuki. Even though there's already two and a half light novels and 60 to 70 episodes of the anime dedicated to Itachi, who was only alive during very well-documented periods in Naruto's history. Sure, Sakura is one of the main characters of Naruto, but genuinely, I would not be surprised if somebody told me that Itachi ended up getting more screen time than her. Listen, I love Itachi. He's probably my second favorite Uchiha, but there is quite literally nothing from his life we don't already know. Ironically, what we would probably get as a manga if Itachi won is just his chapter in Akatsuki Hiden. And like, it's a cute story. It gives us a better look into the relationship between Kisame and Itachi. But the chapter is more about how blindly loyal Kisame is towards Itachi than anything. Well, a manga about Sakura would almost definitely happen in the blank period, where we have next to no information about how everybody got so strong and what happened in those 15-ish years. But when it boils down to it, we really don't have to worry about Itachi or Sakura. Because while we can see who's in what position, what Naruto 99 doesn't tell you is the number of votes. We simply see who's in first, in second, in third. We don't know by what margin they're in these positions. And let me tell you, it's not close. Though well, there is an insane amount of love for Sakura on Twitter, and there is a lot of people voting for her, it's Minato by a landslide. Even Itachi, who's considered one of the most popular characters in the entire show, is not that close to Minato. Minato leads on every single continent except for Central and South America. I don't know why they separated Central America from North America. That was kind of a weird move. Like, why would you pair together Central America with South America when Central America is part of North America? The only thing that should even be remotely concerning about Minato's placement at number one is that in Japan, he's seventh. And you're not gonna believe this, but when it comes down to anime and manga, Japan is a pretty big say. But in Japan, there is something universally agreed on to be even worse than Sakura in the top three, and that's Naruto. See, across the entire world, Naruto is currently placed sixth, which is insane. Listen, I am all for voting for the MC of the show in a popularity contest. The MC of the show should be the favorite person. Unless, of course, we're talking about the situation where the winner gets a manga. Because, you know, Naruto's already gotten one. And not a short one, by any means. If you're sitting there and you're legitimately upset about Sakura being in the top three, why aren't you upset about Naruto being in the top six? He's had his time! We got 750 episodes, 10 full movies, he's got two light novels! And even when the light novel's not about him, it's about him! Even Borto, the story of his son, is still like, 50% about him. This is significantly more jarring to me than Sakura being at three, because the first five people are all very genuinely interesting characters who I guess could use a little bit more time in the sun. Minato, like I stated earlier, gives us looks into the second and third great Shinobi World War and his love story with Kushina, which may possibly tie into the Uzumaki clan downfall. Sakura can give us a look into the blank period, which I guess Naruto can do as well, but like, do we need that? Coming in at number four is Shisui, which like, 
but like fine we get it he was an incredibly cool character with a broken ms and we really don't know anything about him and coming in at number five is kakashi and sure kakashi has three light novels and one of those light novels is currently getting a manga which is most likely going to get animated again at some point actually no it probably won't be animated again that would be weird even for boruto but you know who was hokage during the blank period Kakashi and a lot and I mean a lot of stuff happened during the blank period stuff that we've read about in light novels like Kakashi trying to figure out how to live without his Sharingan and grappling with becoming the Hokage while dealing with identity issues feeling like he's not worthy of the title but Naruto at six he's above Madara and Sakamo Hatake and Sasuke and Jiraiya and Shikamaru listen this man pays my bills but I don't need more manga about him. But once again, I feel as though it's important to reiterate that none of these things are really something we have to worry about and more that we should look towards the optimistic outcome of Naruto 99. See, here's the thing. People for years have been calling for Minato to get his own manga. The number one spinoff that everybody wanted after Naruto was Naruto previous generations, Minato. And while we got Boruto and the anime is a mess, but the manga is very good, the mess of Boruto's anime has only made the cries for this Minato show even louder. And now that it appears as though Minato is going to win, if hypothetically the reception to Minato's short manga is so overwhelmingly positive that it makes Kishimoto and his investors, and that is very important here, think about what the Naruto community is currently willing to give their money to. See, here's the thing. Kishimoto is going to finish Boruto. That is inarguable. It will not be abandoned and it will take years. Kishimoto is actually very proud of the Boruto manga because, like I said, it does very well in Japan. Even the anime does well in Japan. However, that's not to say that the tester of a Minato short manga doing incredibly well wouldn't stick in his brain. In fact, they may or may not already be planning for that Minato manga as we speak. And so here's the thing, and I've said this before, you have to look at what Naruto has been giving us recently. Turning this theme Ninja Scrolls into a manga, Sasuke Retsudan into manga, and then subsequently animated, and also offering us a short manga based of a popularity contest. See, think about this from a business perspective. Minds behind Naruto decided, what if we ran a contest to see who the most popular character in the entirety of the Naruto universe is? And the winner of that contest gets a short manga. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds a lot like a pilot episode based off freely generated consumer data. And sure, you can vote every single day, but you know what that does? It finds the most hardcore fans of Naruto, those willing to wake up every single day and log a vote into Naruto 99. And should hypothetically those most hardcore fans be Sakura fans, something like a Sakura manga or a Minato manga or an Itachi manga could be created. And the thing is, those most likely to watch a spin-off are those with the most hardcore fans. So by figuring out which character has the most hardcore fan base, they can easily deduce which character's manga would do the best, as any character with a hardcore and dedicated fan base has guaranteed readers. And guaranteed readers means guaranteed money. And let's not forget for one second that Naruto is a business. So no, it's not the One Piece community banding together to make sure that Sakura wins her own manga. And even if they did, it would not matter because I am 99% sure that Minato will win. But even if it was Sakura, genuinely, what do we have to be upset about? The real reason that people don't like Sakura as a character are the actions that she had as a child. Feeling as though she hasn't been given enough context after being a child to truly forgive her for what she did as a child. So if hypothetically she were to get her own manga, wouldn't that be more context? Wouldn't we get an opportunity to better understand a character you feel as though is poorly written? Wouldn't Kishimoto get a crack at explaining one of the most beloved characters in the entire universe? Because that is inarguable. There is no greater scheme. There is no other anime fan base pulling the strings. She's popular. And just because you and your gaggle of 12 year old men or those Naruto content creators obsessed with getting clicks by calling her useless, don't believe her to be one of the most beloved characters in the Naruto universe. The funny thing about a popularity contest is it goes by popularity. And sure, you can make the argument that the shippers are pushing her that high. But even if that was a circumstance, that just means they're more dedicated to seeing their favorite character get her own manga than you are dedicated to seeing somebody like Minato or Itachi or Sasuke get their own manga. And while there's no proper way to consume anime or manga, if they're more dedicated to the universe, you better believe they're gonna get what they want. Because let me remind you, a dedicated reader is a dedicated dollar. And it doesn't matter if you think Sakura is useless, which she isn't, by the way, if there's a million other people who wanna see her manga. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind you that people like Sasuke have gotten their own manga without there even being a popularity poll. And the same could be said for Mirai, Maikai, and Kakashi, who are currently getting 
getting the Steam Ninja Scrolls. There is a wave of new Naruto manga coming. And while obviously, yes, I very much want Minato to win in Naruto 99, I also fully understand that Kishimoto fully understands that the community wants Minato content. Because once again, this is a test. So if you really genuinely want to see something like a Minato manga or an Itachi manga or a Sakura manga, just go read the mangas they've already created. Here's the thing, while we may technically know everything about Itachi already, there is a wave of light novels getting their own manga. And you know who has two and a half light novels? Itachi. And the same could be said for Sakura. While she technically only has one light novel, she's basically the star of Sasuke Retsuda. So once again, I will reiterate that the only real answer in all of this voting is Minato. You genuinely can't be upset about who wins if you're not reading the manga they're already releasing. But what do I know? It's not like I'm directly advising them or anything. Let this video serve as nothing more than a reminder that you should go vote in Naruto Top 99 right now. Because just like with everything else in the world, if you don't vote, you don't get to get upset about it. But please, for me, don't go vote before you remember to like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noni bell. Listen, they're desperate. They know they want more money. All three of those top three people are getting their own manga at some point or another.